if Steve Young can sit on the bench for four seasons, like Steve Young's a Hall of Famer, if he's willing to do it and has the competitive drive to do it, why can't somebody else when asked about um, his quarterback situation? Now, you said you heard Barrows talk about the context of, of that quote. Was there something that Barrows thought need, people needed to know? Yeah, I think he brought up previous situations, right? I think Rodgers. I, I don't know. I was kind of zoning in and out. I just – he defended – Jed didn't just pull this out from nowhere. I think he kind of led him that way in the question. Though, when you watch Jed's audio, he felt very confident about talking about Steve Young. That's yeah. all to me that matter. Yeah. And, and and the other thing is, all you got to do is read slash listen to Steve Young's book. Steve Young was a starter at Brigham Young University for several years. And it was before we were alive, but once you listen to that book and then you realize, like, know some people on that team and the pride they take in that team. Kyle Whittingham, Andy Reid, those guys love, I mean, Kyle obviously is now at Utah, so it's a little weird, but Andy's love of BYU. You know why? Because in the early 80s, you know what BYU was? It was fucking Alabama guy. They, they were competing to win national championships and producing Heisman trophies. That was their starting quarterback for several years. Then he was the number one pick in the USFL which these weird leagues sound weird to us, but at the time they were getting all these sweet players. He started in that league. Then he goes to Tampa Bay and starts for several years there. So Steve Young, while once the, the 49ers traded for him, he had played a lot of football, right, as a younger player, like started and played in college at the highest of levels. Like how many programs in 1982 were probably better than BYU. Notre Dame. Notre Dame, Dame would be one. Yeah. It's a sh it's a, wouldn't you say it's a pretty short list? <laughs> like yeah, they could I mean, play with anybody. By the time he got to the Niners, he was 26 years old, I think. 26, something like that. 27, maybe almost. So he was in his prime, which is part of, I think, what made that situation so difficult. And like John said, we didn't cover it. We didn't live it, but we both read his book. And uh, have watched all his, uh, you know, the, the football life, all that kind of stuff. And the book goes deep into it. But it was a very, it was a really tenuous. Other people could talk more firsthand about this than us. But it's pretty obvious when you read or watch anything about it. It was a pretty tenuous situation. And part of it was that Steve had, Steve's clock was ticking, right? Steve was ready to win. He forced the trade from, well, he didn't force the trade from Tampa because they they were going to draft. They drafted Vinny Testaverde, but he prevented them from trading him to a bad team. They wanted to trade him to the St. Louis Cardinals, and he said, "No, I'm not going there." And um, and so Bill obviously gets him, and Bill thinks Joe was going to expire soon, and Joe just the goat that he is refuses to die. But that situation was not a this. Here's the other to me the biggest part about this situation though. Trey Lance, no, Trey Lance isn't sitting for four years. Like Jed York is just picking up the talking point from John Lynch and the talking point from Kyle Shanahan and kind of selling the same thing. Now, is he preparing for the possibility that nobody trades? Are they really willing to pay $27 million for Jimmy Garoppolo to be on their team and maybe still be their starter and stunt Trey's growth? Maybe. I think all he's saying is let's not talk about it like it's such a stupid uh, a stupid option. You and I don't like that option, but we'll dive into that more with Greg Pop on the next podcast, which you can hear coming out on Sunday. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is not going to happen. And uh, I guess we, you know, for the, also Jimmy Garoppolo is not Joe Montana. Like that's the other part. It was Joe Montana that kept that kept Steve Young on the bench. Joe Who Montana won multiple Super Bowls by the time Jimmy Gr or Steve Young had showed up. The other difference, guy, is like you said, he sat for four years, which is impossible now. The variables are completely. There was no salary cap. One, two. The, Trey Lance's greatest attribute is his contract before we learn he can play. And even if he becomes a great player, they're basically synonymous. You have a great young quarterback who's on a cheap contract. Like that's part of that's part of the Justin Herbert package. The other thing, guy, is and we'll like you said, we'll talk about it with Pop. If you told me right now Jimmy Garoppolo in a vacuum could be Trey Lance's backup, it couldn't get there's it's humanly impossible for them to find a better backup, right? Knows the offense, has won games, but it's not that simple. Right. It's just clearly there are. That's a great and, point. And, and, that's and a great the last, point. You would love and, for Jimmy Garoppolo to be Trey Lance's backup. If that's all you take a pay cut at $10 million dollars and was cool with it, for sure. The other thing, and I, some people, one guy on social media when I posted the clip, because I just kind of did like, this is 1 million percent not the case, quoting Jed's deal. 
and was like, you're just clickbaity. I'm like, well, one, that's not even my video. That's NBC's. Like, I don't get credit on that. Two, you scroll through my tweets, so this is not a clickbait situation. Kind of, I, I get triggered when you call it clickbait. When it's I not agree. Clickbait. I love it. And last but not least, I didn't respond to this guy, but I thought about it. That my response once we talked about it would be, these young quarterbacks, name me a young quarterback who had to compete for his job that was drafted high in the last half decade. All the good ones, right? They had to like or, really compete, you're saying? Because if you want to argue that like first year, whatever, unique circumstance, the second year, every single one of those guys from Herbert to Mahomes to Allen, even back to Mariota and Jameis and Carson Wentz, and it's just their job. By the second year, because part of it, like as you get older and you become the starter, it's always your job, right? Like once you become Matt Ryan or Phillip Rivers or whatever, there's no, it's just your job. But early on, like the group last year, it just became Trevor Lawrence's job day one, Zach Wilson's job day one, Mac Jones's job day one, Fields by about early October. It's just, he's the Bears quarterback now, right? There's no like, what are they, when are you just going to make it? Trey Lance's job. Are you going to wait? And I think that's where the old school guys, and Greg falls into that category of like, competition and it's like I, I get it no no one disputes that like being pushed can't make you better but in 2022 with his contract like eventually and I keep going back to the poker analogy like you just got to put your chips on him and, and whether it succeeds or fails no one knows I don't know you don't know Kyle doesn't know Trey Lance doesn't fucking know but you got to see and the only way to see is like more than likely even if Jimmy if what if Jimmy said listen I don't think he would say this, but I'll go from 26 or 7 or 25 because his cap hits different than how much he makes. So it's a little weird. I think his cap hits 25. He makes 27. But it's irrelevant. You know, the Niners are, do you see today that they did the cap, updated cap space? Niners are second to like last. They have like 1.5 million. They couldn't even sign. Well, they don't have a first round pick, so they probably could sign all their draft picks. But they are near the bottom I and mean, they don't have any space. Well, yeah, I mean, they have a guy that put, is not going to be their starting quarterback who makes a large chunk. Because if I took that away right away and gave you $25 million, they would shoot up the rankings. So it's it's a little jaded. But to me, if he would t- make $10 million, I still think that's pretty weird. Because what if Trey, like, kind of weird started at the beginning, two and two? Not just from the outside, because I don't think anyone would care. and be like, just keep going with him. But what about some of the players? Like, if you're George Kittle, like, put Jimmy in there. Right? Yeah, $10 million not backup money, even though you could have a backup making ten million, right? But, it's not starter if, money. Even if he take a, went to five million, if he's around, no matter what well, Trey does, if it's not per, if it's not good, people are like, well, just throw Jimmy in there. Then, well, it just it'd, it'd be a crutch for Kyle. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You look back at what Miami situation was like with Tua and Fitz. Uh, I mean, I guess it was better for the organization to play Fitz. It wasn't better for Tua. Now, part of that he might was be injured. Might that was his first enough. year. Yeah, they got rid of Fitz right by the second they year. Did, they just, but they, just... they, it, they, it, it, they pulled two at one point and put Fitz back in, right? Oh, you mean his? Yeah, but I think Kyle would do it like that. Yeah, he might. That's what I'm saying. So I agree. With, my point is, I'm agreeing with you. Just having him around, it to, it's totally dependent on what is the coach's stomach for development because at some point you got to do it is it forced on you or do you choose it you know in the long run it's it's like working out like i don't like working out necessarily but you do it because in the long run you hope it pays off so you do you suffer you suffer a little now and uh and later you you get the benefits of it and that's you know how much are you willing to suffer and and this is where i always go back to the rg3 year with Kyle, part of being a good coach is can you reduce the suffering? Can you get to a point where you enjoy the working out? Do you learn some breathing techniques or change your mental attitude or whatever? And can you make, can you win? Can you do enough? Can you make up for it in other ways with other players, with your run game, with your receivers? Can you do it enough that uh, you can win and develop at the same time? Like that's, that's the ideal. A a lot of that's team development. You don't, you don't fail. You just learn. Win or lose, we booze. Win or lose, we booze. <laughs> I, you know, win or lose, we booze, or you don't fail, we learn. They, they both work on this case, but there is no way to improve as a quarterback without throwing some picks. 
Because what happens once you throw a pick? You learn, like, I can't do that against that coverage with that play. And there's the only way he figures that out is, like, by playing. So, you know, I saw a lot of people surmising that maybe Jed was just saying that to help also prop up. Like, I I don't think that's the case. I just think it's Jed talking. I think it's partly that. I think in his mind, he's like, I'm – we're all all three of us are aligned yeah but i also think we should be open to the possibility and the likelihood that they've had a conversation because if you're kyle shanahan and john lynch you've had to have at least a conversation with jed jed if it came down to it would you be willing to pay jimmy garoppolo 25 million dollars if me the football expert said i want to carry jimmy on this team and I think Jed's kind of saying, I'm prepared to do that if that's what the guys want to do. And, and to me, that I, I see a lot of people kind of giving them credit. I would give Jed zero credit because this is all monopoly money. Unless you were like, we, we were going to use that money to do this and we knew it, then it's like, well, then you should do that. Right. But I think we all come to an agreement they weren't going to use that money to sign other players. Yeah. Now, the one thing you never know if like a trade – comes out of nowhere and you could trade a second round pick for a guy like Khalil Mack or something. But to me, like Jed paying him 25 million or pocketing that money means fucking nothing to me, you or anybody. And really not much to Jed. These are all like as crazy as it sounds, 25 million would change probably every person listening to this as lives, including me and you to Jed. These are all line items on his operation, right? It means well, it's not money out of it's money out of his pocket, but it's not necessarily money he notices is out of his pocket. Yes. And it's really not out of his it's pocket. It's not even out of his pocket. Yeah. That's right. You know, so it's it's out like he'll get a media rights check and they just funnel it all back in. So I you get no credit for doing that. The thing that we question is like the team building aspect. And it's just pretty a slippery slope risky. There's a reason that for example, Cam Newton wasn't going to be their backup. They just they cut him, right? All in on Mac Jones. Once they went to Sam Bradford, all in on Carson Wentz. Once they Tyrod Taylor, like their backups are just Chase Daniel, who's a clipboard holder. Like you just pivot hard, right? Chad Haney, what did Veach want? I just want a married guy around my young Patrick Mahomes. That's I mean, it's it's pretty like there's a tried and true formula now in the modern day NFL. In the Bill Parcells, Bill Walsh, Mike Ditka days, society I mean, we, we smoked in planes in the mid eighties, right? I mean Gay people couldn't get married. Like, I mean, fucking things are different. Like, this is it's a different world now. It, it just is. So, you to me, you can't. There's nothing that Steve Young and Joe Montana have in common with this situation besides they throw a football. Because the, the I would say the business is completely different. There wasn't a salary cap. Well, John, and also, again, I think back to your original point on Steve. They They were both, both of them, much more established players. Right, like even if everything was exactly the same then, except for the individual people, it still wouldn't be a similar situation. Joe yeah. Montana was a, a champ, several an MVP and a champ, and Steve Young was an established NFL prospect who just the Niners had control of. If prospect is you, even calling is too little. He was better than that when he played. He was what's good. What's weird is that it went from Steve Young. Like at the end of the day, the Niners kind of got to buy low on Steve Young, right? Yeah. I, I I do wonder, let's just, and they wouldn't do this, but like what Trey Lance's value has gone down a little bit, right? You've already wasted a year of his contract. His film didn't blow anyone out. Now you could still trade him. I don't, you wouldn't get three ones back. Would you get two ones? I mean, there would be enough teams that like him. You would Here's pay. my question. Would the team drafting second trade you the second form, or would they draft Malik Willis? Like, that's part of what you're up against now, right? Yeah. Like, would the Steelers give you their next two ones for Trey Lance? Probably, right? Maybe, assuming, they, but they assuming might. They, 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 assuming they liked him. Yeah. Uh, but, that, I, but that's I, my point. Like, until he starts playing, his value starts diminishing. Like, it was like, Jordan Love, they got, you know... And then we see him play one time. It's like, could you even get a third for him? Like, things change fast. So fast. Yep. I do want to call attention to one other thing, one other thing that Jed said about last year, which I thought was a good – just I was glad to hear him say this. Quote, we could have very easily not made the playoffs. We could have very easily not come back in the last game of the season. That's true. They, they could have – this is what I say when we talk about the night. Here's what they did with – here is what they did with Jimmy. Well, here's what almost happened with Jimmy, too. So, but anyway, 